Welcome back. In this video, we are going to link a script to our button. So let's go over to our assets folder. And now let's create a new folder here, which I'm going to call scripts. Inside of this folder, I want to have all of my scripts. So for now, let's create a new C -sharp script inside of this folder, like so, create C -sharp script, and let's call this one game logic, like so. So this game logic script will now contain the logic of our game and it will contain, so to speak, the behavior that in our case, the button should have once we click on it and what it should do. So for now, let's open up this game logic in Visual Studio and see how we can actually run something once we clicked on a button, for example. Okay, so inside of the script, you can see we have all of the default code, such as the start method, and the update method. And now what we're going to do is we are going to create our very own method. Okay, so in order to create an own method, first of all, you need to add the access modifier. An access modifier is a keyword such as public, private, or protected, like so. So these are the different access modifiers that you can have, and you can also have the empty access modifier. So here, for example, you see there's no access modifier. So if they didn't add the keyword public here or the keyword private here, because these methods, they are specific to this class. So by default, they will be private. So these methods, they are by default assigned to an individual class. So what we can do now is we can create our own method using the public keyword here, for example, because we want to make sure that this method is going to be accessible from outside of the script also. Then we need to say what kind of return type we want to have. So here, for example, void will be the one that doesn't return anything. And we see void was used here before. Void means basically an empty space. So it's going to return empty. So it's going to just return nothing. And that's fine because we only want to execute something. We don't want our method to return something. So there are methods that either return something where you give them some values and they do something with the values and they give you something back. So it's like a box where you have an input and then you do something inside of the box and you get an output. And then there are the methods where you have an input and you don't get an output. So the method just executes something with the input. And then you have the methods which have a and then you have the methods which just have the box. So no input, no output, they just execute some code, they just do something. Okay, so we are going to have the one that doesn't uh, require any extra data. So it's just going to execute a code block. Okay, so I'm going to use this one on button click, like so. And every method needs to have these brackets. Okay, so this is how you define a method using the access modifier, the return type, the name of the method. I'm using on button click and you can see the first letter of each word is with a capital letter and the method name also starts with a capital letter. Then you have the brackets opening and closing. Here you could add the input that you want to give. And then we have the curly brackets in which we can now add our code block. So here, our code block that we want to execute once this method is called. So once this method is executed, the code inside of the code block will be executed. So that is a very clean way to separate code from one spot to another to make sure that you have clean code. Every method should just have one purpose. Okay, so it should just do one thing, so to speak, but it doesn't mean that you just have to have one line of code. It can have multiple lines of code here. But the goal is to only serve one purpose. Okay, so in this case, once the button is clicked, here we want to execute something. And you can see what we have here is a comment. So this is code that will not be executed by our program. It's just for us as developers. So we can now see that there is this text code block, but our game will not care about this. So it will not do anything with this text here. It will not execute it. The compiler doesn't care. So basically the thing that makes this code understandable for our PC will not care about this. So what I want to do here is I just want to use the debugger to write something onto the console. You might recall 
we had this keyword console before and that's this window here. So there's this console and I would like to write something onto the console once we press on this guest button. So how can we achieve that? Well, let's go over to our code and actually say what we want to do here. And I'm going to use this debug keyword and you can see it is offered to me by Visual Studio because it's part of the Unity engine. So once you hover over to see class Unity engine, where did you hear that word before? Well, up here. So we are using this namespace called Unity Engine and inside of this namespace Unity Engine there is a class called Debug. So it's basically like a book that has a bunch of functionality in it. Okay, and we are using that book inside of this library of books. So inside of this namespace. So now this Debug is a class and a class can have multiple methods as well as properties. We're going to look into what methods and properties are in depth a little later. We're going to see how we can create our own classes later on as well. But for now, just try to understand that this is basically a book that can do things for us. So it has on one hand, some properties which describe how this debug is going to be like. And then it has methods that allow us to execute something. So to be active and activate something. So in our case, the action that we want to do is we want to write onto our console. Okay, so in order to write something on the console, we need to use the log method. So you can see there is this method that will log a message to the Unity console. That's exactly what we want. So now in here, we can write in quotations what we want to say once we clicked on the button. So what I want to say here is who clicked me. So our Unity console will be very angry. And then you see after that I add the semicolon. And as you learned earlier, whenever you finish a statement, you need to add the semicolon in order to say, okay, this statement is done. There is no more code coming that is part of the statement. Okay, so every single statement needs to be finished with a semicolon and the next statement goes then into the next line. Okay, so in this case, our debug will call the method log and the log method, we are passing some data to it. We're passing the data, so the text that we want to display once we clicked on the button. So now let's save the script by pressing Control S or by saving it from here. And that is generally something that you will need to do, even if I don't specifically say that you should save it. Every time that you make changes to your script, you need to save it before those changes will be noticed inside of your Unity project. So otherwise it will not be available in your Unity project. At least not the changes. So now if we look at our project in the scripts folder, we have this game logic script, but only because it's there, it doesn't do anything because it's not assigned to any game object or UI element. So what we want to do is we want to add this game logic to our game. So what I will do here for is I'm going to add a new game object, an empty game object that I'm going to call game logic and this game object, well, I'm going to reset it first because it's always nice to have your game object at the 0, 0, 0 position. And then I'm going to assign this game logic script to it. So I'm going to drag the script over to the game logic. You could have alternatively also just added the component using game logic like so. If you have it twice here, get rid of one of them because you will only need the game logic script once assigned to your game object. So on one hand, we have the script called game logic. And on the other hand, we have this game object called game logic. So what we want to do now is we want to execute a certain method once we click on the button. So let's go over to our button and then go over to our button component to this one here. And you will find that there is this on click area. So here you can say what should happen once you click on the button. So let's click this plus button. And then let's drag our game logic in here. And once we've done that, we can now say what we want to execute. So from the game logic component that we added to our game logic game object, I want to execute a method. 
So you can see there are a bunch of things that are there by default that every mono behavior just has by default, but there is one thing that is not there by default and that is the one that we have added ourselves, which is the unbutton click method that we have added ourselves. So let's now select this and now our code is connected to the button here. So once we click on the button, the unbutton click method of our game logic script will be executed, which means that it will now execute this code here, this unbutton click code, which then means it will just write something onto the console. So it will use the debug class in order to log something. So in order to write something onto the Unity console. So let's now run our game and see if this is actually going to happen. Let's click on this button and you see here at the bottom it says who clicked me. But then you can go over to your console and you can see that at 13 18 46 the debug log was called and it said something like who clicked me. Now let's click again again and again and you can see every single time that I click on it it will say who clicked me. Okay and that is how you can connect your code to a button and how you can write your own code actually as well. We saw a little bit of what methods are, but no worry, we're going to go into methods a lot more. So we're going to build so many different methods that it will become second nature for you at one point. So whatever you learn in this course, don't worry if you didn't understand it at the first time, because we're going to use the things that we're using a bunch of times and every single time that you see it in a different context it will add to your understanding of that thing that you are learning which will then make sure that you will definitely understand it it's like language learning in general where you learned a word and now you know that a word means something in a particular context but then if you see the word in a different context now you will learn that the word has more meanings so more depth to it and at this point, you will understand the word a lot better. And the more often you come across this word, the better you will understand it. And it's the same with programming, okay? So thanks a lot for watching this video. See you in the next one.